What's up, Kuyons? Ron New and Randy here with another review. Today we got a classic that we never did before, actually. It's a Lagavulin 16 from Isla. Just surprising. We love this whiskey. Uh, this is one of those ones that uh, we started with a long, long time ago when we started experimenting with whiskeys. Yeah. I mean, it's always, you always hear about, you know, Lagavulin all the time. And uh, first thing you do is like, damn, I gotta try this. So you start buying a few peated whiskeys. You might start out with some hard bag, and eventually you get to one of these. <clears throat> I think we've done reviews on um, a lot of the uh, Offerman edition yeah. Lager Bullens, but uh, we didn't get the uh, Caribbean cask one. But when we all, I mean, at one point, I'm gonna end up picking one of those up. Yeah, that's the only one that I haven't had yet. Yeah. Uh, would love to get it. Let's see, we've had. Had 16 before we had the uh, distillers edition before yeah like said, no reviews on those but I had a good bit of lager ruling uh we had the nine year we probably have a review on that yeah i think we do i think we have a review of nine year if not i mean i got a few bottles of that by the house but um so classic malt um from diageo from the classic malt series i think they have a few of the whiskeys on the classic malt series like omen um there's a few of them, Talisker and stuff like that, but Lagerbull was definitely on that list. 16 years old, this is the classic one. Um, so, known for their four large onion-shaped stills, like spirit stills over that uh, Lagerbull one, uh, that they claim makes the distinct flavor that you taste every time you taste Lagerbull one. So, there's no known, I, I, I'm pretty sure that's colored. If you're looking at that, it looks got, a little it's got dark. some good legs on it. But it is a 16 year. It is so. a 16 year. It doesn't tell you no uh, Diageo whiskey. That's the only main thing I have beef with Diageo. Like, you can't tell whether it's colored. You don't know if it's not your filter. They just don't say it on the bottle. So there's no way of figuring it out. Even if you Google it, I mean, there are people that like that they'll, you know, make a uh, an estimate oh, well, or make a uh, educated guess about it, but you don't really know for sure. So. All right, well, let's get into the, the nose. Dude, wow. Straight log of Yeah. Punch it strong, just... I always get the same nose from every log of wood. Now, depending on how it's made, um, the 16 classic struck match. Yeah. Always. It's the sulfur struck match nose which is unlike uh lafroig peat which is like a, a very like a vegetal uh creosote kind of nose whereas this one struck match art bag's got bonfire thing going so one thing i love about isla is like lagavulin has this flavor yeah lafroig has this flavor art bag has this flavor they all have their own unique flavor and uh and they're all right next to each other. Think yeah, about it. Like, it's crazy. Uh, like, you have the distillery. You can literally like take a bike. If you want to do um, tours of Lagavulin, Laphroaig, and Ordbeg, you can take a bike ride and catch all three of those. It's crazy. One day I want to go visit my uh, my one by one piece of land I have from uh, Laphroaig. <laughs> <laughs> Friends of Laphroaig. So yeah, struck match, but also. Once you get, you know, acclimated to the smoke, you get past that smoke, you get some fruits there. So you're getting some sweet notes. I don't say sweet notes. I'd have to say it's kind of hard to pinpoint a particular fruit, but... I get, I get some sweet notes in there, man. It's getting past that smoke, though. Like classic sweet. scotch whiskey. You get some pears, maybe some stone fruit in there. Pear for sure. I was gonna say maybe a little plum. Yeah. Also, Lagavulin. I'm not sure if it's um. I probably didn't research that enough to see like if they use them like ex bourbon, ex sherry. I think they use them both though. I think it's ex bourbon and ex sherry. So that's what you like. I mean, I'd get the plum note. I get your plum note in there. I'm thinking it's probably from ex sherry cast whiskey, ex yeah. European sherry. Oak. Plums are one thing that I seem like I can really pick out on it. Grassy, definitely a uh, coastal, also with the smoke. It's not as uh, like sea salt breezy as a uh, 
Oscar. I know. But I was going to say the Boone and Hammond, but... Right. Here's Mo. You're waking up the neighbor, dude. It's there, though. Sure. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. It's, you, you got that Lagavulin nose. Your fruits. And that's uh, really... There's, there's a sweetness in the fruits, and that's pretty much nice about little, it on the nose. Coastal spray. Right, Still, just being that though, it's a brilliant nose. Oh, it's yeah. really uh, enjoyable. I'd even say it almost has a little sherry to it too, but it's got to be sherry cask. <laughs> like it, they probably, you could probably look it up and find out. I'm sure it's ex bourbon. It has that, that kind of sweetness to it. You yeah, know? right. All right, let's give it a shot. I find the nose is actually more pungent up front than the yeah, I know. than the palate, the taste. Taste uh, is, man, I got sweet before I got smoked. Yes, yeah, super sweet, smooth, and then the uh, the log of comes, is comes to it. Yeah, you know? well, mid palate that struck match note comes out there. Um, uh, like stone yeah. fruits initially, stone fruits, uh, pears, and then uh, right after that, that struck match. Taste comes out and then it starts. It kind of just it goes back rolls. to sweetness. Yeah, you know? yeah, it kind of rolls into the finish. Yeah, yeah it, it just it goes sweet, and then a uh, struck match, and then back to sweet. It's like a sweet bomb. Definitely, uh, yeah, you got your little stone fruits, pears, peaches. Man, nice long finish on that one though. Minty lift off at the end. Nice little, like, wintergreen kind of lift off mint note at the end. I try to stay away from the mint note a lot of times because I feel like I get that on everything, but yeah. That one, this one, like, I don't get it on everyone, but this one I definitely get. It's almost like a wintergreen mint note at the end. It just, like, the finish is long. Like, it's still rolling, like, from my last sip. So, obviously, that, that uh, smoke taste kind of hangs on the tongue for a while, so it's, it makes it a little bit longer. Fine. The oakier things are sometimes the more mintiness I get on it as well. This uh, I don't find is very oaky per se, uh, but it definitely has that just that subtle mint towards the end. Yeah. Let's see. Definitely a good sipper, man. It, it's I'm trying to see if I really kind of can. Like I got the plum on the nose. Like, do I really get the plum in the that on the palate? Good man. This is smoky, sweet. Even a little molasses in there. It's like a, a sweetness, like a a multi sweetness. You know that I would kind of come off as like a molasses. It's so like dessert like. Yeah. Almost like a uh, like a like a cheesecake almost in a kind of a sense because it's just sweet. Then you get the little bit of lagavulin. And then it goes back to sweet, and it just kind of trails off nice and slow. It's real, yeah. real dessert-like. If anything, uh, out of the three well-known Isla whiskeys, this is the gentleman of the group. Like, it's got a tuxedo. It's doing its thing. It's fancy. Our bag's almost like a, a headbanger. Like, it's coming in with some smoke. Like, it's it's coming in there playing some, some Led so Zeppelin. Fancy is doing his thing, and then yeah. uh, here comes uh, Corn. That's what Our I'm bag saying, rocking out. Yeah. This guy's sipping with a pinky in the air for sure, because like he's doing his thing. But it's an orchestra of flavors. You, like, the smoke doesn't. Um, you can tell it's like and smoke, and it plays in the orchestra. But it, it plays in the orchestra. It isn't like the the main thing hitting. You know what I mean? There's, there's sweet notes in there, so it it completes the flavor all together. I agree with you, and it's been but, so long since I had this. But I mean, there's a lot of other flavors, and then you get that log and bulliness to it versus say like an art bag that just slaps you with it you, you, I got sweetness from our bag but not like this one yeah, you know this, I mean? it throws all that smoke and just right. you get smoke grunt right up in front of you yeah. and then it uh sweetens up and it balances out as it goes or so but uh this is good stuff like I said just straight up dessert yeah uh score I like it um I, I've always liked this whiskey uh, at one point I think this was one of my favorite whiskeys I've ever had but that was kind of early on in the it game. It was, uh, and I think it was our favorite whiskey yeah, for a long was, time. That was so good, but I still like it to this day. I mean, even though it's a Diageo product, I'm not really a fan of that. But, um, dude, I, 
I go 7.75 on it easy. Uh, maybe push out to an 8. I'm just going to say 8, dude. I uh, think it's... That's good. I think it's deserving of that category. I think it's uh, fucking delicious. So 86 proof on this one. So it's uh, it's right at the bare minimum. Not quite bare minimum. I mean, it's, it's above 80, but it's 86. I think, obviously, there's a few things that are above it. You know, you got uh, Lefroy Lore. Yeah. You got... Uh, Any cash strength version of this. Or you you know, a lot the, of the Ordnix. Spring Brinks. Yeah, Spring Banks. A lot spring, of the art Spring breaks. Brinks. <laughs> spring the Ugadale's up there in that yeah. proof. So. Ugadale, you got uh, even the Corey Brecken. But there's uh, there's the 12-year cash trend version of this. There's, uh, so this is sweeter and lighter fruits or whatever. The I find the darker fruit whiskey is like that, the lore and the yeah. Corey Brecken and stuff like that. That's really what kind of step up above this one. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I... I I like the 7.75. The eight's good. I can I can see it pushing out the eight for sure. This is one of my favorites for sure, like top ten at least. Yeah, I think it's deserving of an eight. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah. uh, like price subscribe. Point, by, by the way, price point on this one's usually pretty up there. I'm looking at like 100, 115, I think. 89 if you're lucky, but it's only going up from there. Roughly around 100, so 100 bucks. So you you could pretty much say. I think I've had one bottle of that one before. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah. It's been so long since we've had one. But, uh, yeah, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll check you all out on our next video. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Later.